Hey creeps, welcome to my horrid abode. My name is Scara, Damsel of the Doomed, and today we are here with actor, podcaster, writer, and comedian, yeah. Jason Rounds. Nice to be here. Nice uh, to see you. Thanks for having me here in Satan's face. <laughs> exactly. It's hot as Satan's asshole in I, this room. Yeah. And that's why I'm shiny and, you know, I can't do anything about it. It's that's right. fine, though. It's, o it's okay with you. I enjoy the heat. Oh, well, obviously you're, you're wearing all black. And, I always um, do. A hat and a jacket? I too. only have uh, one, two things with color in them. I have a pair of underwear that are uh, red in the front and brown in the back. <laughs> what? Everything else is black. <laughs> I'm yeah. kind of curious about the red in the front, but we could... I was uh, kicked by a dog when I was four, so I got an oversized urethra that has... A, anyway. This man has a story ready. Uh, you'll read about it in my suicide letter. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about... What brought you to Texas? What brought me to Texas? Mm -hmm. A laundry list of things. This is kind of cool because I've never really talked about this before. Mm -hmm. um, Exclusive. Th there's a couple, a couple of um, things. The obvious one was that Austin, specifically in the state of Texas, was the most um, fertile place to do stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, six clubs in the city, open mics every week, in a time where. Most countries weren't even allowing travel, uh -huh. so um, it was an obvious choice. You know, I do stand-up comedy. Actually, the end of this month is my 25th anniversary. I've been doing comedy in 25 countries, so I wanted a place to extend that, and uh, Texas seemed to be the spot. And some research and stuff, I decided to make a move here in December. Uh -huh. But my mother had gone to see a fortune teller, gypsy uh -huh. lady, uh, over 20 years ago, and I specifically remember this conversation, that the woman had told my mother a short list of things that were very true and close to me, and one of them that really stuck out, because it was really being a guy who had moved from Canada to see greener pastures in the United States, it was Hollywood or New York. There was really nothing else in, right. in the industry that was tempting in uh, Vegas or whatever, you know, as a retired performer. Right. But uh, the uh, the gypsy lady told my mother that I was going to find successes in Austin, Texas, That's specifically. Insane. So wow. I really, I made a note, and every once in a while I'd check in on Austin. I'd yeah. look at drone videos and see what was going on. And then friends of mine had started to come up here by South by Southwest. Uh -huh. Toronto had by North by Northeast. So there was a lot of team trading between mm -hmm. Austin and Toronto. And the friends of mine that were lucky enough to perform at the music festival here in Austin would come back, like, uh, you know, to my shitty Pittsburgh type steel town uh, city in Hamilton, a uh, city in Canada, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. Uh, a great place for a hangover and a black eye. So, <laughs> and the only way you can tell if a girl's in a relationship is if she's uh, has a broken arm. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Real hard high fives. <laughs> is that how it happens? Yeah, sometimes they run into a door frame. Yeah, I fall down the stairs and abortion. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've lost my train of thought because there's so many cool things. We were to talking look at about here. what brought you here, and but you came in December. Yeah. Were you here for the ice storm? I was here for the ice storm. How does that compare to the weather in Canada? Very much, you know, uh, I was kind of laughing. Even with the power out uh -huh. and, and the uh, um, water mm -hmm. uh, absent and seeing a, a, a four inches of ice across the swimming pool at my, uh -huh. uh, my place. And, uh, uh, you know, look at... We know that Canada gets snowed. Yes. And I knew that... There hadn't been a snowstorm we in Austin. We don't get it, right? Yeah, it's somebody not a said thing here. seventy years. Right. I googled, found all these black and white pictures of Austin <laughs> seventy years ago, and there was like six feet of snow here uh -huh. or something from the photos. And so I knew it was temporary. It was a real pain in the ass, and I was I was really wanting to go out and play in the snow when everyone was looking out their windows yeah. waiting for death. <laughs> As a Canadian, I was out licking stop signs and eating ice cream. <laughs> I couldn't, uh, it didn't really affect me that much. And it made me funny how, you know, like how when it rains in California, people slow down like it's a foot of snow. When they drive? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, no, it wasn't, uh, it was cool. I, I liked it. I was like, okay, this is, of course it snowed when I moved to Texas. Yeah, you brought it. It was all yeah. you. What about this heat, though? I don't mind it. That's good. Because yeah. you were in L.A. for a long time. Most definitely. And I never really climatized to the winter. I was familiar with winter, and I had to deal with it, especially as a child. Like, I remember, I think it would be looked at as child abuse now. 
Like I had to walk 40 minutes with other kids to school in the morning because I was a latchkey kid. And uh, you literally hold heads with your friends and walk that way. Uh. You could die. <laughs> you could die. <laughs> like minus 30 uh, Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's unbearable. Uh, that's yeah. that's uh, torturous is what that is yeah. in Fahrenheit, I think. Terrible. That's the exact translation. Terrible. Look, I'm no mathlete, but I'm pretty sure that sucks. Oh, I'm dumb as a stick. <laughs> That's why I got into show business, because you keep fooling people. I think you know something. Did you start out as a comedian or an actor, or how did that evolve? I'm an I'm a comedian, a stand-up comic at the top of all that. It's the, the only thing that I've ever excelled at and done well. Mm -hmm. um, the other things, branches on that tree. I don't know. I saw your movie. Yeah. And you're, you're an excellent actor. I think you did excel at that. I did, because the director was kind enough, uh, and my friend for 20 years... Uh, to allow me to give me the luxury of failing. Uh, so Jason was in a movie called Spare Parts. Yeah. It came out in 2020. It's out right now. No, it came out on Amazon June 1st. Oh, it just came so out. Brand spanking new. Yeah. Brand spanking new. It's still a rental. Like, it's not on Prime for free yet, I think. It's still, no, it's rental and streaming. You have to pay for that. Yeah, I think it's six bucks or something like that. Yeah, but it's uh, good. It's good. I enjoyed it. Thank you, because yeah. it's... Um, he plays the bad guy. I always play the bad guy. And so much so, I didn't even play the bad guy. I was the bad guy because the second, the first day after the middle of the first day, the director's like, whatever you're doing, stop that. Be yourself. Mm. I was the only person on set that wasn't acting wearing his regular clothing. Yeah. My wardrobe was all my I own clothes. I think you had this hat in the, yeah. in the bar scene. Right I had at the beginning. all my clothes and I wasn't acting. I just kind of uh, had to create explosions in, in places where they needed them and try and grasp the dialogue and, and own it the best I could. But thank you. Uh, I'm glad it was good. I really thought I fucked it. Why? I really thought I fucked it because um, I struggled. It was hard. Yeah. It's a hard thing. You know, you've, you've acted I've in films little. and stuff. Yeah. So it's like it, on my onstage persona or whatever you call it my id uh -huh. uh my imp of the perverse as my friend calls it i'm just such a terrible like i really just want to pee on your camera man oh <laughs> i don't know why that is he, wa he wants that too so. i just want to pee on him enough to push his balls back into his shorts <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I want to see his eyes bug out from my psi this is your imp of what jesus so, imp of the perverse okay. it's that uncontrollable like verbal diarrhea okay yeah so uh, having being handed a script with rules and trying to put that on stage persona into that which with the director wanted in the story, uh, it was a weird thing because I, I was like, I, there was no rules. Uh, I, I was the writer, the performer, the special effects, all of it as a stand-up comedian. Wait, you had a script, but and you were just loosely kind of. No, I thought. Uh, I had a script, but there was changes, and I had a really difficult time memorizing oh. dialogue. And now I'm stammering over my lines and trying to get what the director wanted out of me at the same time. And then you've got, like you have here, uh -huh. a dozen people Watching. looking at you, yeah. and you just see your friend's money flying out the window. Oh my God, every, it's so stressful. Right? Yeah. And everybody's rooting for you, but you're, you're kind of sidestepping your position, and, and it creates anxiety. It's deeper and deeper yeah. in that anxiety pit. Yeah. I'm not, I never want to be on anyone else's boat. Because I've specialized in sinking them. No, <laughs> I you don't know, know about I mean? that. And uh, um, it was uh, luckily the girls that uh, everybody on the cast, but specifically the girls in the band, uh -huh. were very cool. And uh, um, the girl that I was acting with a lot in the mm -hmm. scenes, my love interest in the uh -huh. movie, she took time out of her own schedule to work with me and stuff. And then I left a cup of piss in the room by mistake. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, I was struggling the first day, and I was in my, my uh, uh, trailer kind of just like, ah, oh, fuck. And then I'm looking at schedules, and I know what scenes are coming up, and I'm trying to Frankenstein something in my head. And I knew, look, don't be late. Show up on time and give your chance to fail from the start. Okay. And uh, I didn't want to be late, and I noticed when I came out of my trailer, the restrooms had like four or five people, and I knew that lineup was going to create me being tardy for set so I peed in a paper cup 
and put it on top of the uh, bookshelf uh, in the room. But I didn't know. I thought this was my apartment for the whole duration. I, I, it's my house now. I'll just put a pee cup up here. And um, I pissed in the cup, completely forgot about it, and then they moved this down one room. So the girl was co-starring with me. I hear her screaming. Oh, no. Did it fall on her? Please, no. Please. What okay, happened? Don't jump ahead. <laughs> Can't, I'm sorry. I just I saw it. Why no, would I? Okay, go it on. may as well. Uh, but, but, well. Okay, so it was a paper coffee mm -hmm. cup. And my piss is like uh, like a, they should use it to clean like steel. You weren't very hydrated. No, it was more like chutney. Piss oh my chutney. gosh, you know the horror piss people? Piss chutney. Piss chutney. That's a band name, like, I call it. Like coagulated, uh, like a, a phlegmy. Yeah, is that from your white <laughs> urethra? <laughs> well, when I pee, I always drain my knee into the same bucket. So there's this kind of tapioca thing going on <laughs> of like clotted semen and blood tissue yeah and like f fragments of uh um, kidneys and sounds stuff. delicious i'm, di I'm dead Conti yeah on the inside <laughs> yeah. so um the the corrosive aspect of my piss separated the glue on the cup enough that it had a steady drip oh so when she grabbed the cup to see what what this cup was it was it leaking out all over her hand and uh. i hear there's certain ways that people say your name. You almost know that you're, you're on, in trouble. You're in shit. Yeah. It's that mother thing. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I'm, I'm on a shit list. So she had that tone. And I knew that I'd fucked up and I couldn't figure out why. And then when I, she's yelling, is this piss? Oh, no, it's not piss. Is it's piss. It's piss. And I'm like, oh, I'm just being quiet in my room. And then I said, sorry. Uh -huh. And she reached out the door and poured out the piss cup and uh -huh. just shook her head and went back in. And then we had rehearsals, and she goes, you should have been fired yesterday. And I go, I know. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something that can get you fired, peeing in a cup? Well, union stuff, you know, I don't know. That's another thing. I'd never been, it was like joining someone else's circus. And it was really important to everybody to have success in this, mm. you know, the camera, all these, it becomes a, a culty kind of family yeah. for the duration of the project. I actually had a little separation anxiety. When I it was, was over? Yeah, I was like, oh, man, like these... Everybody was very nice and stuff, but that's part of the, the muse visiting and then away. How long did it take to film? Ah, uh, I think two months. You know, the girls were in fight training for over a month. I was, the director was showing me videos, because check this shit out, these girls are fucking killing it. And they've got swords and they're doing the whole thing uh -huh. and kicks and everything and jumping around. And they were in training probably two months before we actually started filming, but uh, the duration of the shooting was at least two months and where was it shot Sudbury Ontario Canada ah. uh, it's a nickel town it's really bad um, and c the Canadian government some form or another is trying to uh, get more American dollars in the country so if you do a film or TV show you can uh, apply for a grant well they'll double your budget Oh, shoot. So, yeah, so a $2 attracting. million dollar movie, it turns into a $4 million dollar movie, and you get all kinds of breaks and stuff. Vancouver had that, but now there's all these smaller cities. Like, there's a lot of, uh, like, when I moved out of my hometown, this Pittsburgh mm -hmm. of Canada, uh, all these Netflix shows started filming in my fucking hometown after I moved out. Uh, Hands Made Tale, uh, all these stuff. So all these rural Canadian towns that have been untouched for the last 30 years are great backdrops now it's an industry and it's super cheap yeah, yeah. the filmmakers get money that's awesome mm -hmm. so the director how did did you did you know the director and he wanted to cast you he's a fan of your comedy or was it something that you saw was casting and you went out and no auditioned? i've never auditioned you know i've only auditioned i think for five things in my career uh -huh. I'm not, uh, I don't audition. Um, two of those were for Saturday Night Live, but the other stuff was for some calls for uh, lesser projects. But um, the director kept showing up at my shows. And I'm always suspect the people that dress nice that come to my shows. I'm like, either you're a cop <laughs> or you're a dealer. <laughs> and I couldn't peg this guy. And um, he introduced himself and explained that he worked for... Atlantis, Atlantis Alliance, Alliance Atlantis, and that um, he was a director and he really liked my comedy. This is the late 90s. Uh -huh. And um, then I shot a, a one hour stand up special in 2000 
and I invited him. I figured this is the best impression I'm going to make to a, a film uh, a director and writer is to see me in in front of a camera, in front of a, a general audience that didn't know who I was. Because I'd built up a bit of a reputation uh, in Toronto for just, I was doing all kinds of crazy shit. Um, and um, so uh, we just kept in touch and he had some projects that he'd forward to me and some stuff would d just kind of, you know, things get momentum and then it just, the bottom right. drops out. It was very, you know, yes and no type thing. So we just kept in touch. He came to my shows and uh, so on and so forth. And then um, he said, we're going to do this movie. And um, I flipped through the script. Mm -hmm. You know, I highlighted all my lines. I thought, okay, this is a significant chunk, but this is really cool. Uh -huh. The odds of uh, uh, this coming to light is, you know, show business. Right. You don't know. So I really was rooting for it, but at the same time, I knew it was going to be, um, it could just fall apart as I'm going to the airport. Yeah. You know, so um, he, uh, I never auditioned, and he actually rewrote uh, the, the character Sam that I played in the film to more or less be a little bit of a, a narrative of what my onstage life was like. That's interesting. So like a brief synopsis of Spare Parts is probably... There's this band, a punk rock band, yeah. all female band. I think like the Runaways. Like the Runaways. Like the Runaways. Um, you're, I guess you're scouting for yeah, kind stalking. of these gladiators. They get kidnapped. They get limbs chopped off and replaced with swords and chainsaws. Very Evil Dead. Yeah. Kind of a vibe to that. And then they're forced to fight. Yes. And then you become a love interest of one. Yeah. And then I'm not gonna spoil it for sure. anyone, but it's it's a. Uh, a lot of female fighting and blood, and there's some really good kill scenes. And yeah. The fucking face-off part. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love yeah. that part. Oh, yeah. There's some some good stuff in it, and especially near the end, because there, there's, like, periods of where they're coming to the location, mm. the girls, and uh, it's kind of the quiet before the storm. Right. You know, that cut, the it's ride. It's eerie. The, yeah. Yeah. And then it, it picks up uh, very... Um, Grindhouse by the end of very it. Much. It, well, it, it accelerates. I knew I was going to like the film within the very first couple of seconds because there's a scene of like somebody with a wheelbarrow barrel, yeah. like, limbs. Very you know. cool, right? It's like, and this is leg. what's coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw that, you know, and I had all the confidence in Andrew and what he did. I'd seen some movies that he'd done before. Uh -huh. He did a, a movie called Sweet Karma about a girl who goes into a... Uh, 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 um, uh, sex uh, transport. Uh, what did you say? Sex we trafficking. Told? Sex trafficking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she, her sister's missing, and she goes into sex trafficking to find her sister in this, uh, this thing. Yeah. And, is it a horror movie? Uh, it's more of a thriller. Okay. Yeah, but he's always put girls up front. Yeah. Which is great for me As because the I, I get to be the shithead. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I got a fan off or something. I get it. It's. Uh, I don't mind it. Um. What's what type of horror do you like watching the most? Wow. You know, we were talking in the car, mm -hmm. you know, like that um the witch and you know, even who's the guy that did summer hood a uh, summer uh uh Midsummer. Oh, Midsummer. Yeah. Ari Aster. Ari yeah, Aster. Yeah, where you're just really confused and you feel like you need a shower. That scene you know, in Midsummer just... when the old guy jumps on Yeah. Off. And then he doesn't die, and they have to go with the mallet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and loved it. Paint his face. Felt like home. Yeah. Yeah, it was, right. It was great. I thought it was some BDSM thing where he couldn't get a boner, so they had to break his legs. Did Ari Aster also do Hereditary? Yes. He did. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. a s Swedish guy. Is he? I believe so. Yeah, Swedish. they have their they have their own. Uh, you know, I love Let the Right One In. Oh, that's a good vampire movie. Great vampire movie yeah. with a lady, a young girl. Ha have you seen, is it 30 Days of Night? The oh, Alaskan yeah, 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 yeah. How clever was that? That was great. And I thought well was done. Great. Those vampires were different, a different breed. The lead guy, because you, you get the uh, um, um, interview with the vampire, which is kind of like drag queen vampires. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But these drag were, queen vampires. Yeah, they kind of like <laughs> Brad Pitt and it's very, Tom very Cruise. pretty. Yeah, they're very pretty. Yeah, you can't. Well, you can't. I don't. I'm not scared of Tom Cruise with his silk pants. And I'd rip ruffles. his pants off. I would rape <laughs> Tom Cruise. He would rape 
Tom Cruise. I would in rape his Tom Cruise. Pants. As a vampire, I'm not going to just accost him with his. Not, actually, not actual science. I had a yoga guy. class next to his ex wife while I was high on cocaine. Uh, Nicole Kidman or Katie Holmes? N- Katie Holmes. Yeah. Uh, motor yoga off of. Uh, Wait, our there's Melrose. a lot to unpack. Uh, okay, you had a yoga class next to his wife when you were. Were you doing yoga on cocaine? I don't understand. I didn't plan on it, but there was a rock in the back of my nose, and as I was doing hot yoga, I got a fucking hand grenade. So now I'm smiling at everybody in the mirror, and I got Katie Holmes next to me <laughs> doing a downward dog show me here where she shits. And now I'm like trying not to jack off because I don't care. No! No? Are we rolling? Can we just peek? Oh, we're, no? Sorry. We're out. We're cut. It's commercial. No, it's okay. no it's don't okay. you ever touch me. <laughs> don't you ever touch me, <laughs> you witchy broad. I cannot, ah, I cannot. Ah, I cannot. spiders. <laughs> ah, ah, spiders. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Uh, I, had to, I, had to tie, I had to put my hand behind my back because I just want to stick my finger in her asshole. <laughs> Isn't that weird? No, it's not, I don't think it's weird. It's weird that you say it. It is weird. That's not weird that you wanted to stick your finger in her Oh, asshole. thank you, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason, it's not weird. Is that a common thing? Tell them what you what you, what you you call this. Uh, Wednesday. No! <laughs> Tell me what you told me. Oh, uh, this is how my grandfather used to wake us up for school. And he called it, he'd say, he'd come in all drunk, smell like mouthwash, singing Tainted Love. So- and he goes, I'm sorry, I thought I was in your mother's room. <laughs> and I go, you are. <laughs> She's next to me. And I don't think I can come again. No. No? Okay, no, no, no we, got, we found the line. Oh, look at us, we're weirdo horror people. Oh, my stomach hurts now. I know, I have diarrhea too. I got a bad euro. A bad euro? Yeah, I ate like five coins. Oh, okay. And let's get back to it. You okay. were telling me about your comedy. It's kind of... I love the, the hands. <laughs> of like, I'm distancing cool it, myself. Cool weirdo. I don't know where your finger's going next. No, I cut my nails where short. Where it's been. Uh, they've been everywhere, actually. What? Uh, tell me the like, evil dead thing with your comedy. <laughs> just doesn't... Just fucking come on. Help me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, evil dead. I'm just going to keep doing this until he pushes his balls back in. <laughs> his balls aren't out, I, I promise you. It's no, a gross. There's just a... He's self-conscious It's a skin tag it. with a heartbeat. He's self-conscious. <laughs> oh, he, he just looked. He looked. Ah, the new guy found out where his balls are. You got him. You got him. Look how long your shorts are. You better get to a hospital if they're hanging out 12 inches. Ew. It's the heat. It's they pull the, him down. He's got a nut sack like a taffy pole. No. Anyway. I was raised by wolves. I think so. No, uh, the horror aspect of it. Uh, yeah. The Evil Dead. Of the film? The no, no, no. Like your comedy style. Yeah. She's doing the get out of here. I, I Stay away from my family. I with my hands. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to have a shit on your front lawn in the morning. Mm-mm. Are we recording? Yeah, it's still going. Okay. It's all going to um, stay. I love the... Look, you know, that... The closet. You guys are all wired for this. That boo. Mm-hmm. I love the boo. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. And then you you're kind of on one leg, and that's where I slide humor under to balance you out a what little What you bit. just did, basically. Yeah. 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 Uh, if I had to read this, what we just said uh, over the last five minutes, uh-huh. uh, it, out to a court room, <laughs> there would be someone and you might. Going to jail. And you might. I know it's gonna be funny though. I'm gonna keep one of those laughing. Speakers in my pocket. Hit the button. Yeah, that'll keep me out of the The lawyer's like, Mr. Rouse, did you say the following? I really wanted to stick my finger in Katie Holmes's butthole. No, I didn't want to. (laughs) I just, I felt compelled. (laughs) Well, isn't that the same? I mean, I guess you can be compelled. Yeah. The power of Christ compels you without you wanting to. Katie Holmes's butthole. I wonder how clean that is. I don't know, but. I heard it looks like a sliced strawberry. If you had the opportunity to finger Katie Holmes' butthole, you probably would. I probably would. I mean, I probably would. You would finger Katie? Maybe. I no. mean, it would be ease. That's painful. No, but you know what? What? Just think, like, if you're going to do it, do it with the lion's nails. Well, yeah. 
I would do it just to say I finger Katie Holmes' butthole. Oh, okay, you're doing it for bragging. I'm just getting closer to God, that's all. Yeah, it's different for you and me. It's di- you, we're different. Do you, do you think we're different when we're it comes different. to fingers in the ass? Yeah. I think everyone's the same person with a <laughs> finger in the ass. Like, oh. Well, maybe with a finger in the ass, but not giving a finger in the ass. Okay. I think everyone's humbled by a finger in the ass. No, because every time I go through customs, I fuck back on it. You! Oh. Yeah, fuck you! Eat the rich! And I take all his bowling rings off his fingers with the old dirt star. No, oh, the dirt star. I've never heard oh. that. Oh! Okay. And, and I fall effect. forward and they start beating me and I roll over with a boner. You're fun to travel with. I'm good with kids. <laughs> Can I ask you some horror trivia? Totally. Okay, we'll see what we get. Yeah. This is from some game. I don't know what it is. Let's go. What 2002 movie sequel directed by Guillermo del Toro featured Wesley Snipes as a half-man, half-vampire day walker? Was it the Grindhouse one with, um, uh, um... It's like a, I think it was a comic first. Wasn't it a comic? Yeah, it was a comic character. With Wesley Snipes? Yeah, Wesley Snipes was a half vampire. Oh, I know Blade, but That's I was it. thinking of something nope, else. Blade. Oh, okay. Bam. What's, come on, Wesley, come back to movies for fuck's sake. Where is he? And He got in trouble for taxes, what? Yeah, and then he did the uh, Untouchables or um, uh, uh, with, with uh, Expandables. Expandables, yeah. yeah. Uh, we need another fucking half... Vampire. We need a Wesley Snipes Blade movie. We I think a, he's got one left another in Another one. Stephen Dorff, too. I liked him in that. He's good. Now he sells vape pens. I think you're going to know this one. Mm. What horror film was Eli Roth's directorial debut? We were talking about it. I, You know, all I can think is Reservoir Dogs, but... Oh, wait. Because he dies pretty bad in that one. Oh, no. You were talking about a different movie. Okay. In the car. It starts with Cabin. Oh, Cabin Fever? There you go. Okay. I don't think I've seen Cabin Fever. You I should. Like it's a good one. Woods. It's very body horror. There's a lot of gross stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's nasty. Textury, wet. Yeah. Pustules. Oh. I think he fingers a pustule. Ew. Yeah, it's up your alley. Uh, what insects? My alley. What's going on? Is that who? Oh, hey, it's Robert. Hi, Robert. What insects are closely associated with the urban legend of Candyman? What was, what, what was the first? Say what insects are closely oh, associated? It's a bee thing. It's a bee thing. This one. Okay, let's do ten. We're doing ten. Which we is got three. a character. If somebody had to describe that to me, I wouldn't have thought it what? wouldn't have had any weight. But that that's a that's a great horror film. I think they're doing a remake or yeah. Candyman two. They should totally. I think there's been a two or three. Uh, then it's a remake. But that thing needs to be replanted and grown properly to yeah. be a cool candy. Man. I forgot the name of that actor, but he was phenomenal. He was in, uh, I want to say Dawn of the Dead. What? Yes. Oh, you're right. I heard him on Eli Roth's yeah. podcast talking about that. Isn't that crazy? That's great. Classically trained actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tremendous. Here he is, the bee master. Uh, oh, wait. And that hand. The hook. Oh my god, I'm shiny. It's I couldn't understand how he got the steel to stay in the bone, but then I realized I was watching a movie about a guy who has bees flying out of his yeah. <laughs> You gotta yeah. suspend belief yeah, a know. little bit. Just, like, how does that work? Let's see. Okay, a group of scientists band together to save the world from a horde of fruit in what 1990 or I'm 1980? Killer tomatoes. Yeah. That's all of it. He's getting these all correct. No, and this is, One, two, this three, is four. the best I've done at any game. I'm more of a Uno kind of girl. <laughs> What was the name of the possessed doll in the 2013 movie, The Conjuring? Oh, uh, uh, I want to say Emily? No. It's close. Uh, Emile? Oh, if you put Emily and Emile together and not Anna in there. Somewhere. But if you're dyslexic like me, it the, sounds perfect. Yeah, so you were saying Annabelle? Annabelle. Correct. It's yeah, Annabelle. Yeah. That's good. And I thought that sucked. You didn't? I didn't like The Conjuring either. Honestly. First of all, the, the Chucky... Chucky's the best of, Chucky's the, of the best. possessed dolls. Jennifer Tilly, Canadian. Hot, Bride of Chucky, come on. Uh, you know what, there's a lot of great Canadians. Canadian comedians are some of the best, I think. We get the uh, Monty Python uh-huh. and the All in the Family. Oh my gosh. You get American sitcoms and um, British sketch comedy. And that's y'all. 
And we're in the middle of that. Yeah. We're, we're kind of hybrids. Uh-huh. Where we sound like you. Yeah. But we also have this other Except you influence. say comedy. Oh, we say all kinds of stupid shit. A comedy. and about. And, uh, free health care. All those terrible <laughs> things. <laughs> you say free health care. Yeah. yeah. Damn. That's tough. That's yeah. That's rough for us. Yeah, but you guys get to uh, miss, like, shooting stuff. Yeah. I did a show true. at a gun show, a uh, gun store uh-huh. last week. Where? In Austin? Time. Yeah, the uh, Weird. Uh, uh, Texas Gun something or another. I can't remember the name, the rest of it, but it was the first time I've seen high-end performance firearms. Yeah. And they're a lot lighter than I... And you know what? They do fit in your mouth when you hold them. <laughs> so you can actually kill yeah. yourself with it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's try one more, or two more, three more. What horror television series was created by Ryan Murphy, who is also... The creator of the TV series Glee. I don't know if I even like this question. Only because you don't like the word Glee. Yeah, I it hated sucks. Glee. I fucking never. I saw the billboards, but why? It was what disgusting. Is it wrestlers or music thing? It's like some... musical theater kids singing popular songs, <gasps> but all like yeah, like they wrecked so many songs. I hated it. Yeah, no, I. It's the Weird Al Yankovic for idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I guess so. I, I, I'll watch Weird Al. But I yeah. want to see musical theater done by fucking, in theaters. Yeah. With Not on musical the TV stuff. set. Yeah. yeah. I almost yeah. cried during the Nutcracker. What? Because this little girl came out who was like seven and then sang in this the opera house in New York. And I was like, I need to get my shit together. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I just felt like a tear like in my eye. Oh like, my gosh. There is, there is a heartbeat. There is. Thank you. Have, you. you have a soul. Do you know the answer? Um, four. Ryan Murphy created what, like, horror style show? Are you going to look at it? No. Oh. Uh, Ryan, what, uh... I yeah, know Lady Ryan Gaga was in one season. There's been several seasons. One was, like, Hotel. One was Coven. Oh, the, uh, American Horror there Story stuff? There you go, yeah. I watched the first Murphy. four episodes of the first season, and I kind of bailed on it. Whoops. Yeah, the first, um... No, of the first season? First I First of all, Twilight first Zone is Murder probably House. scarier than most of the... TV, the original Twilight Zone. The original series. Twilight yeah, like, Zone. You can watch that now. It's still scary. It's it like, still holds up. Totally. The one, How the, many TV shows hold up? The one episode where I'm getting goosebumps. the pretty girl gets the plastic surgery and the surgeons, like when they take off their masks, they're all disfigured. Yeah. Yeah, I love that one. Let me ask you a few more. Mm-hmm. And what 2018 film features a family who lives in silence while hiding from creatures who hunt by sound? Tremors. Actually, that's correct, except for the year. So this is 2018. But I fucking love Tremors, and I Tremors, love Tremors, Kevin that. Bacon in a horror movie? Kevin Bacon, that guy from Family Ties. Yeah. Yeah. No, and then I think they're up to, like, Tremors 5, 7, 8, 9 I have now. not seen yeah. any of it. I just, Tremors 1 and done for me. Yeah. The no, original. I think I saw that at the drive-in. And uh, it was terrifying when they blow up those things with dynamite. Those things were creepy. Yeah. I love that. It was Kevin Bacon, the guy from Family Ties, Reba fucking McIntyre. That's right. Come on, bro. Yeah. Reba McIntyre with a gun. She's another, you know, music artist that should do more movies. She She's should do great. whatever the fuck she wants. She's Reba great. Reba McIntyre. Yeah. Zero lip. I lost my virginity to a redhead. Oh. <laughs> Reba McIntyre? No, the oh. janitor at my high school. You... Oh, was it a lady? Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> we could see him coming down the hall because his pubes would uh, glow in the dark. Oh, gosh. He put a flashlight under his ball so he could see us coming. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are you no. blushing? The answer, because my janitor The answer was a quiet me? place, by the way. <laughs> the answer was a fucking quiet place. But I'm glad you told me about Mr. Whiskers and the ball <laughs> flashlight. I'm going to try that trick later. Yeah, you can do that, guys, at home. A uh, little party trick we used to pull is uh, you get a uh, felt-tip marker, uh-huh. and you you take your balls and you swell them up so it looks like a bullfrog's chin. <laughs> and then you draw a triangles, of eyes, and a mouth, and then you put flashlight under your balls and turn on the light, and it looks like a f- jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, you can entertain yourself in all sorts of ways. You'll get kicked out of Toys R Us for that. <laughs> That's an, It's frowned upon. It's totally frowned upon. In public. Upon. I actually said there's a frown. Upon it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Sad balls. Sad ball sack. That's all right. <laughs> you have a special coming up? I, I do. I have a special coming up. I think it's going to be uh, It's going to be in October sometime. I mean, I think it's going to come out on Devil's Night, Ooh. Uh, October 30th. Mm. Uh, I shot a special in Denmark. 
uh, two plus years ago. Uh -huh. And I was holding it to release it like eight months after I recorded it. And then things started, I don't know, I had an inclination, foresight maybe, to uh, sit on it uh -huh. and finish it the way I wanted it. So it was moderately rushed. I had some intro. Uh, it's a weird too, the opening monologue I was looking at Conan the Barbarian. Mm. So I created this uh, Blade Runner type uh, cinematography with this. So it's a comedy show in the future uh -huh. during a time when segregation and all this thing. But I wrote this COVID story five years earlier. Oh, ooh, creepy. Yeah. Whoa, so super timely. I'm, uh, uh, and it's, it's Denmark, me running and through security to try and get through to my show and stuff. I, they sneak me into the country to perform in this underground nightclub in Copenhagen. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it has a kind of, I wanted, I like the Dust Till Dawn. Ah, uh -huh, me the, too. Or the uh, Pussy Club uh -huh. or whatever it's called. Pussy, Pussy, yeah. Pussy, yeah. Uh, Cheech, Marin. Yeah, yeah. And Naga hide pussy. That's yeah, we got all the pussy. All the pussy. Good pussy, bad pussy. Old pussy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dry pussy. Yeah. Great, great scene. So <laughs> this is gonna not be monetized. <laughs> That's all right. What's wrong with pussy? <laughs> hey YouTube. Yeah, I know what can't say pussy. Fuck off. Yeah. Censorship. God. Cunts. Can we say cunt? I say it with a K, so it doesn't... It's a hard K, it's fine. It's a hard it's K with a capital cunt. It's all right. It works. Hi. Anyway. We're back. Your special will be released on what uh, platform? Uh, I don't know yet. We're going to uh, find out. I'm going to submit it to some network stuff, but for the most part, I'll probably just put it up myself. That's great. See, I, I what a time to I be a comedian. It. Because it used to be, right, like you had to have a... Comedy Central or Showtime or HBO. There's way more lanes. So many more and, now. And, and not only that, that it's your job now to build your own roads. Uh -huh. The networks have their own agendas, and of a lot of them have fallen by the wayside. Yeah. Out of business, you know, things that were landmark staples in entertainment now are, you know, look at podcasting in general. Mm. It's, it's eclipsed. Eclipsed television tenfold you know that's my favorite yeah you can listen to them whenever so there's there's loads of things you know if i was to uh sell it outright but i really looked at cat williams uh -huh. as a guy as far as a business model and he owns all his shit oh does he and i've been fucked around before with contractual things where i was cutting off too much pie for people who shouldn't have had it uh-huh so um I'm not really concerned. I know I have a very decent presence online uh -huh. and I can get it to the people. And if I broke even on this project, I'd be over the moon. That's a success. Breaking yeah, even. and yeah. the bottom line is, is I pay twice as much to do it just to have people to come to the live shows. Those uh -huh. are the only things I really care about, Right. is the live shows. Do you have a home club here in Austin that you mostly perform at or is it yeah, bounce around? Yeah, you know, around? for whatever reason, the uh, my friends that do a lot of productions out of the Vulcan uh, uh, yeah. gas, gas company. company. Uh -huh. But um, that's kind of where I perform the most. Mm -hmm. And that was really the only place that was open, you know, four or five months ago. So now there's some other clubs that have opened up. Is Cap the city. city back yet? Cap I don't know. I've heard that there's some um, uh, politics of some clubs that you can't work for other ones and things like that. Um. I don't know what the status is. Any um, club outside the city, I'm not really interested in, because uh -huh. um, I don't drive. Right. Which was another problem with the movie. Why? When When we got to the page where I'm supposed to drive that Corvette, uh -huh. uh, they go, we're going to do a driving scene, and I'm like, I told Andrew, but it was like five years ago, the director, I go, I don't drive. He figured I would have got a license over five years. Uh. I haven't driven a car ever. And why not? It's terrifying. And I have like a rage thing that I just... You know, I would have checker plate like when I saw your vehicle out front. Yeah. The horror. Uh -huh, the uh, horror web car. Yeah, truck. which is great. I'm like that the would be a first on it car. And stuff. Yeah. I would take full advantage of that and drive it through a shopping mall. Yeah. So on you, Father's Day, just scooping up dads and babies. You're doing it. a service by not driving. Yeah. Your rage, you would definitely be a road rager. And I found that it's a way to actually see some things is by walking. Uh huh. And, and yeah, I walk. 
all the time. And then Uber's so easy, like... I was about to say. Yeah, when I moved to L.A. the first three years, uh, four years, I think, there was no Uber. Uh-huh. And um, it was... Uh, yeah, they were like, you can't survive in L.A. without a fucking car. You're insane. But I always lived within three or four square blocks of mm-hmm. an area that where all the comedy clubs were in West Hollywood. So, so you just walk in. Yeah. Perfect. And then uh, an Uber was it's so easy. Uber was really good and still is in L.A. It was very efficient. A lot of out-of-work actors uh-huh. on their best behavior. Driving nice clean it. cars. Yeah. Here's a water bottle. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Here's some candies. Can I get, you know. So that was very easy. Um, so in the movie, did you drive the Corvette? No. They had to do the shaking thing with the smoke machine. It was the most <laughs> B-movie shit you've ever seen. I was embarrassed. I couldn't tell. No, neither could I. Th- thank you. Yeah, yeah. I there, tell. There were so many things that you couldn't tell that I'd fucked up in that film. <laughs> because <laughs> my, I know Andrew was editing it going, oh. This month. They're literally, he's, I know he was just shaving, <laughs> just editing my shit off the side of it. The wood was just, just, I know he, I just gave him a, a cunt hair. <laughs> it was leeway, no a little room. Just a little... Uh, he must be Hair. a good editor then. Yeah, he was able he, to get that all. Yeah, so he seamless. cut around all, and then I knew once he he brought it in, uh, there was going to be moments there, and that's what they caught, you know, and that's all that really counts. Mm. But my uh, ego is like, fuck! I really wanted to do a, a kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, the methoding acting where you 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 write. You're, you're in the journal as the character and ah. you start to build out your psychology. Well, Daniel Day-Lewis. Totally. Yeah. You know, I knew I had those abilities, but um, I had a lot of things dinging off in my head to, that wasn't allowing me to, to revel in it that much. Because Andrew had brought me in to do the specific thing that I do that he observed. Yeah. But I really wanted to wow people and do something that was... Uh, it was wow, though. It was wow, but it could have been better for me. It's like, you know, you watch old episodes of things you've done, and yeah. you're like, fuck. Oh, it's, d- it's very Look at that lampshade. It could have been yeah. the shadow. There's, al- it's, there's always going to be it could have been. Yeah. For sure. But you played an excellent bad guy, and I know you say you know, it's kind of your stage presence persona and all that, but it was great. Yeah, no, it came together. I'm, I'm flattered that you said you that. You stuck I know out in that movie in the best way. Like, yeah, a memorable character. A couple of the girls had said that I, she, I remember when I started to get my shit together, they go, Jason's going to be stealing scenes. And I was just trying to get through the scenes. That, I would have never guessed. I would have never mm. guessed in a million years you had a hard time with it or that you felt this way because I really, you come off very confident and it's a very fun watch. And I think there should be a Spare Parts 2 because yeah. of what happens at the end, which I'm There I've was a talk. There was a talk. You, your character, I'm just saying. Yeah, I no. I, I don't want a spoiler alert. So I would love you'll have to, to watch the movie. have the time necessary to come back and really open that character up yeah. a lot more. It, there's a lot that could be explored with him. Totally. Um. Totally. Yeah, no, th- that was fun. I, had, I Because I knew I didn't have a, a abundance of... Uh, acting skills I decided to do the machinist route and I was down to uh, I lost 100 <laughs> I was down to 141 pounds oh my goodness so I wanted to be as my father the emperor yeah he's very, he was gone yes yeah and I wanted to mirror some of that so I figured uh, physically I could kind of use that and, oh uh, goodness what'd you do the keto diet no I just did Percocets <laughs> <laughs> And uh, juice. I just oh juice. God. I juice spinach, <laughs> yeah. ginger, and carrots, a little bit of protein powder, and Percocets. And that worked. And like yoga, it. yeah. And yoga. And I leaned right out. It was mm. crazy. Well, you're still a lean guy. Are you still following? Up? I'm struggling with getting the weight back on. Uh. So I'm reaching out to some companies to probably do some. I can't even talk about that right now. Let's look, yeah. Yeah. There's another thing that I'm working on uh, with. Uh, it's based on health and fitness. Interesting. It's a film project. You do all sorts of things. Okay, tell us I'm about your. I'm always busy. Idle hands, lady. Idle hands. The devil's whatnot. Playground. Yeah. You end up with a finger in your ass. Yeah. And that, a toys <laughs> idle hands leads to a finger in Katie Holmes' ass. My grandmother has that tattooed across her <laughs> her gunt. What is it, the name of your podcast again? Mr. Shit Whiskers. Is it his lie? He lies. Jason Rouse lies is the name of his <laughs> podcast. I think. No, it's uh, Jason Rouse's safe word. Uh, and is it weekly? 
Yeah, actually, I've been pretty active lately, and we've been doing about two episodes a week. And then um, there's going to be a new horror-based uh, kids show that I'm working on called Ground Zero. Whoa. And it's like a post-apocalyptic uh, children's show uh, that's going to start in October. I think that's going to be maybe two a month for that. That's going to be a bit of a production. And then um, my that's special awesome. in October. Uh -huh. And then ideally, you know, we'll see what happens. But I'd really like to be on tour in October. Mm -hmm. As soon as I drop the special, I'm going to... Um, either we're talking. We're Do doing some stuff. Do you have the name of your special? It's out? called Svin. Svin? Yeah, S-V-I-N. It's uh -huh. Danish for pig. <laughs> What'd you call me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <A> Danish pig. <laughs> <laughs> With frosting on You're it. You're not wrong. <laughs> Sveen. I liked how you said yeah, that. Yeah, Sveen. Sveen. Jason Rail, Sveen. Yeah, it's, um, it was like, I wanted to make, it's really filthy. Mm. It's really what? filthy. It's the dirtiest stand-up special ever recorded. It might, not the funniest. Dirtier than Andrew Dice Clay. Uh, I, yes. Okay. I eclipse, I'm a new thing that you guys are not ready for yet. I don't know. But I know Austin prides itself on being weird, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, put that to the test. Well, do you have any dates coming up? Here dates in coming up? I'm at the Vulcan Theater uh, this Thursday, uh -huh. and then. But the big show that I'm really pushing is uh, the Canada Day show, uh, July 1st at the Vulcan, and then. Uh, but mostly just spots in and around the city, between the creek and the cave, uh -huh. and. Um, the Vulcan and a handful of other places, but realistically, checking back in the um, probably you know August, uh -huh. things are starting to open up, uh -huh. and I need a touring schedule. I can't just do four cities in Texas. I'm used to being away for at least a month, uh -huh. in six months at a time. If I get on an airplane, I'm gone for three months. So July first is the Canada. Day yeah, July show. July first Canada Day show at the Vulcan Theater. You can go to. Uh, Big Laugh Comedy and or JasonRouse.com. It's killers. No one's heard of these guys. They're fucking some of my favorites. All Canadian comedians. All Canadians. We might have some special guests. Uh, we're going to see. I have a friend who's a well-known comedian that I found that she's half Canadian. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put out an invitation for her. She's a lot of fun. I can't say her name. But, um, yeah, lots of cool stuff. And I'm really just enjoying this. The summertime here, as hot as it is, oh my. you guys are great. I, honestly, I, I can't really say it's it's been a weight off my black heart oh. to be around people that are kind of kooky, <laughs> kind of kooky, and I Good. dig it, and Good. I dig it, and yeah. it's very authentic. It's very real kookiness, and I know that people are drawn to it more as a, a look at a, exotic birds, but uh, <laughs> you guys got some cool feathers. Well, thank you. Yeah. You're definitely one of us. We can we caught that vibe right away. So we really appreciate Finger you. Finger in coming. the ass, people. That's yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's who we ah, are. That's who we are. Ah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Did we come together? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on our show, Jason Rouse. Thanks for having me oh on the show. Oh, my Lord. I'm so hot now. Goodness. I know. I peed a bit. A little bit. It's okay, though. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, stay tuned next week when uh, <laughs> we all put a finger in our ass. <laughs> I appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. Oh, I guess um, leave us a comment or whatever you do, and we'll see you later. Thank you for coming. And, ah. <laughs>